I'm back with another interesting tip using hydrogen peroxide. Now, most people have hydrogen peroxide sitting in their um, medicine cabinet in a little brown bottle, and it's usually like a 3%. You may have a food grade hydrogen peroxide, which you could also use too, but your white blood cells actually make hydrogen peroxide as a defense mechanism to kill off invading bacteria, funguses, parasites, yeast, candida. So basically what it does is it oxidizes the layer of microbes, okay? So it destroys the cell wall of invading microbes. Now, when we produce hydrogen peroxide in our bodies, we have various enzymes to um, dismantle it as well. Um, but hydrogen peroxide will then turn into H2O plus oxygen. And there's other types of oxidizing compounds that are created as a byproduct from this that will help sterilize the area. I'm not gonna get into those. All you need to know is that you can use hydrogen peroxide for various things. If you cut yourself to clean the area, you can put some hydrogen peroxide on it. It bubbles up and it kills off the microbes. Um, also, you can gargle with it. Um, one tablespoon, which is 15 grams of hydrogen peroxide to 60 grams or four tablespoons of water. What you would do is you would drink it, swish it around the mouth, don't swallow it, but you can gargle with it if you have a sore throat. You can just swish it in your mouth for 30 seconds to kill off and cleanse the microbes in your mouth. And you can use it for many other things, from removing a stain that you have on your clothing, and you can even use it to clean your vegetables. Uh, you take a half a cup of hydrogen peroxide, mix it with two cups of water, let your vegetables soak in it for a few minutes, rinse it off, and you have some clean vegetables. Anyway, I just wanted to create this quick video on hydrogen peroxide, and I wanted you to comment below on your experience with hydrogen peroxide. I'm gonna show you the best remedy to get rid of tartar, as well as to prevent tartar from coming back. What is tartar? Well, tartar is this uh, calcified, pale yellow, hard growth on the inside of your teeth that tends to get into your gums. It can create um, gingivitis, it can create bad breath. And if we take a look at what tartar really is, it's actually a collection, a colony of bacteria that is in a slime that then has calcified. And that's just a way that microorganisms survive in nature. Over 95% of all bacteria in nature uh, survive as biofilms. Now, if you ever walked through the woods and you saw a little stream and you reached down and picked up one of the rocks in the stream, on the outer part of it, you're going to feel it's kind of slimy. That's biofilms. I mean, even in your pool, if people don't use enough chlorine or other things, natural things like certain salts and things, then you'll get this slimy thing at the bottom of your pool. And these biofilms are not just bacteria. There's a bit of fungus as well, yeast and candida. And they are not on keto. In other words, they like carbs. They ferment carbohydrates in your mouth. And then what happens is they release uh, lactic acid. And so they make your mouth really acid. And that acid has the potential to leach away your calcium and break down your teeth, giving you cavities and all sorts of wear and tear in your teeth. Now I'm gonna show you one of the best anti-tartar uh, toothpaste that you can make at home, very inexpensively, and it's very effective and very natural. You know, when they looked at ancient Egyptian, like mummy tombs, the teeth were pretty messed up. They had a lot of dental problems. And it probably came from all the beer and the bread that they consumed, which is the perfect food to feed these bacteria in the mouth. But they used a type of toothpaste composed of ox hoof ashes, burnt egg shells, and volcanic ash. That's a great mixture. That probably creates some abrasiveness, right? And then the ancient Greeks used a different type of toothpaste made out of burnt shells. And they used powdered talc, which is kind of like a combination between magnesium and uh, silica. And then they mixed a little salt and honey in there. And then the Romans used crushed bones, oyster shells, and charcoal with a little bark. So the problem I see with that formula, it's a bit abrasive and it can wear down your teeth. So this formula is very non-abrasive. You have clove oil, peppermint oil, or cinnamon oil, or turmeric powder. So in a little container, you can just put like three drops of one of these or like a little pinch of turmeric if you want to use that. Now, the next thing you're going to put in this little container 
okay, is hydrogen peroxide. All you need is like a fourth of a teaspoon, which is about 1.25 milliliters. Now, the interesting thing about hydrogen peroxide is that your body makes it to actually kill bacteria and microbes. So you're not giving something that the body doesn't know what it is. And hydrogen peroxide is a very potent antimicrobial that inhibits bowel films. The next thing you're going to use is baking soda. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, that's pretty gritty. It's going to be invasive. But in actuality, it has a very low abrasivity, which is basically the ability to be abrasive. There's this uh, metric or this scale called the relative dentin. It's kind of like a layer right underneath the outside of the tooth. So it's relative dentin abrasivity. Basically, it gives you kind of a, a rating system to know how much something could, you know, break down part of your teeth. And baking soda is a seven, okay, a seven. Compare that to regular toothpaste, which is between 70 and 250. So baking soda is actually not going to grind down your teeth. And baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. So it adds alkalinity. It takes these acids and actually helps neutralize them. And our body makes sodium bicarbonate. It's a way that the body can buffer some of these acids. So both hydrogen peroxide and sodium bicarbonate are something that our body makes. So with baking soda, you're going to use a fourth of a teaspoon. Then you're going to add either raw honey or manuka honey. But just add a fourth of a teaspoon, not very much. But the key is it has to be raw or else you're just basically killing off the things that are anti-biofilm. Now, raw honey also has hydrogen peroxide in it. Now, manuka honey doesn't have the hydrogen peroxide, but it has some other things that regular raw honey doesn't have a large amount of to address this problem. Then you're gonna add a half a cup of water, which is 118 milliliters of water. And then you're gonna mix everything out real nice. So then you're gonna brush your teeth with it, with a soft bristle toothbrush. This way we can preserve the teeth kill off this film that is developing into tartar and you want to do that twice a day. As a side note, vitamin K2 has some interesting research that may also inhibit the formation of tartar. It's kind of a mixed review, but I have heard reports from quite a few people that swear by it and they notice that the inside of their, their teeth are nice and smooth when they take this K2, which has a purpose of directing calcium into the bone and out of the soft tissues. Now, since vitamin K2 is so new and so important, you should probably learn more about it. And I put a video up right here. Check it out.